Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Torfin at the Babbling Belgian and welcome back to Grand Edge, the show where we talk about very interesting decks to play around with. And today, in this very, very stormy weather outside, so if you hear some uh, howling winds in the background, that's perfectly fine, there's a storm raging outside. But it's perfectly fitting for the deck that we'll be looking at today, because today we're going to look at a very cool Skellige deck using most of the new cards, and uh, it's called the Viking Revenge deck. So, the Viking Revenge deck, a very aggressive, hard-hitting deck using the Patricidal Fury ability. So, as you know, Patricidal Fury spawns and plays Arniel of the Patricide, which has 11 power, spawns 3 Deafening Sirens on the opposite row, and damages those 3 by 1, giving you 3 Bloodthirst in 1 go. 3 damaged enemy units in one go. But uh, let's go through the cards rather quickly. Most of them are familiar and we talked about the new cards in the card review as well. But uh, let's go from the bottom to the top. So Ancrate Marauder, quickly just three random damage on the opposite side of the field. Very good to spawn some random uh, Bloodthirst. And then of course two Gutting Slashes for the, uh, well, base of four damage and then six damage if you manage to have two damage enemy units, which should be rather easy to do with this deck. Then moving forward in the Bloodthirst archetype, we of course also have two Uncrate Longships. So if they are on the melee row, they damage every unit that your opponent plays by one. So also a good way of generating some Bloodthirst. Drum and the Berserker is just here to have some, uh, yeah, just some filling in our deck because uh, I didn't really know what to do with this 5 provision card. You could go for another Stunning Blow, but I feel like the Drum and the Berserker is better as it's a passive card that doesn't need any other units on the field. But it gives you two damage pings and then transforms into a six power unit. So very, very good value for those five provisions. And then the Bear Witchers, way more important than the other cards that we just talked about. On deploy, they damage themselves by three. But if you only have four cards left in your hand, they also damage an enemy unit by three. So giving you eight points as a base. If you manage to heal off those three points that he took in his own damage or play him with uh, Geralt Quen, you actually get 11 points out of this five provision card which is a very very powerful way of dealing with both a little bit of damage and high base power on your end then of course stunning blow five damage or six if your opponent's enemy unit has armor so another way of taking out those low provision units an uncreate great sword to benefit from all of those damage ticks that you'll be dealing armory i'll be Dealing with Armory in a minute, because Armory is important for one specific card in this deck, but it boosts the unit by 6 and gives it 3 armor. Then Herkia, basically the same thing as with the Uncrate Longships, we just provide random damage, so random damage ticks, and if you want to use her ability or order ability, you split 3 random damage on a row of your choice. Then Doneran Hindar also benefiting from Bloodthirst, base damage of 2, but goes up to 4 if you manage to have 2 damaged units on the field. And then one of the newer cards, Gerd, um, if you play this early against a swarm base deck or another deck like for example Lippy decks that play all those um, Queen's Guards at the front row, those Shield Maidens, not Queen's Guards, Shield Maidens, you can actually play Gerd on that same row and he will spawn a Deafening Siren on the opposite row and damage all those units by one giving you a lot of bloodthirst in one go uh, but on adrenaline 4 he will only damage the siren he spawns so be careful with that if you play him too late his value will be diminished significantly then of course champion charge can be uh, omitted in a deck like this you can destroy a unit outright if you have three bloodthirst which you can do with your leader ability in one go otherwise it just does five damage well, Bjorn is back, playing a raid card from your deck, so you can use any of the Gutting Slashes, Stunning Blows or Champion's Charge from your deck and pull it immediately. Then uh, Heron Kadoog, very very important card in this deck, so you can spawn and play a Bear Witcher Adept, Bear Witcher, Bear Witcher Mentor or Bear Witcher Quartermaster. The most important two in here are the Bear Witcher that we just talked about or the Bear Witcher Mentor. If you have a lot of damaged units on the field, both on your side and your opponent's side, and you only have three cards left in your hand, it is better to go for the Mentor, because he will go up to a, an immense power because of all those damaged units. You can also play uh, Heron Kadoog as a proactive play by placing it next to a damaged unit. Um, there's a few other units that will benefit from this, because on its order ability, you can heal the adjacent units by three. You can also do this the other way around, 
facing units right next to it that might get damaged later on so you can heal that off later because that's another six points on top of the mostly like eight points of the other cards you can play with Hern Kadoog. so very very powerful card goes up to 14 15 points if you play this right also very important is the Covenant of Steel. I did a lot of experimenting with this deck and the Defender is really necessary here. The Defender will mostly be defending the next two cards that we'll be uh, discussing, uh, which is the Dire Bear. Very interesting new card that uh, blocks your opponents from boosting any units in the opposite row as the Dire Bear is located in. It also blocks your own units on that row from boosting, but there isn't a lot of boosting in this deck. The only boosting that we really do is with Armory, which will be used on Arnagat most likely. Um, but the Dire Bear is really cool because a lot of people forget that it's there and then misplay by putting a boosting unit on that row. It's also very uh, powerful against Drive units, so if you put it on the road there where there's a lot of drive units, it blocks those abilities completely. So no more boosting from drive, no more boosting from assimilate and stuff like that. So Dire Bear, very powerful, especially because it already has eight base power. So even if you don't block any boosting, you have a lot of points right from the get-go when you play it. Uh, I'm going to skip Geralt for a minute because Arnagat is basically the big power play in this deck. If you play him, he gains armor for every damage unit on the field. So that includes your own and your opponent's. But if you only have four cards left in your hand, then whenever your opponent plays a unit, it will damage that unit by its own power and damage Arnagat by that unit's power. So especially against something like Movement uh, Squiretel right now, it can just take out the last three to four cards from your opponent just by being on the board. If you play him with only three cards in your hand, true Geralt Quen, he also gains a shield which blocks the first hit, which can be a lot of point potential just because of that shield. Um, so that just takes the first hit. And then of course with Armory, you can put another six points and three points of armor on Arnagat, protecting him enough for the rest of the round. In my original version, I also had Sucris in this deck. You could use him to protect Arnagat completely, so he doesn't take any damage at all. But it takes so much setup that it's it barely works. It's it's hard to pull it off with all those cards. Because then technically you would need three cards. You would need Covenant of Steel first to defend everything. Then Sucris to defend Covenant of Steel, which also gives you a good combo there. But, uh, and then Arnagat in between there, so Sucrus prevents uh, Arnagat from being hit, and the defender prevents Sucrus from being hit. So that's a very good play as well, but you need to be able to set it up, and in this meta, that hardly ever works. But the defender is enough to keep the Koralti Heatwave from your opponent from taking out your Arnagat. Then, of course, we also have Koralti Heatwave, just to be able to take out defenders, um, any annoying scenario cards and stuff like that. And then of course the Wild Boar of the Sea, because of all the Bloodthirst on the field, this is the better option to my mind. It's one provision less than uh, Hamdal. Um, and Hamdal, if you have five units on the least filled row of your opponent, or uh, a few damaged enemy units, um, Wild Boar of the Sea actually has the better value, so I usually go for that. Uh, also, Wild Boy of the Sea damages every unit by one, while Hamdal does it randomly, so you have a bit more control over what's happening. You can calculate what uh, the point total will be of this card. Now, the one thing that I do want to mention is Geralt Quen is basically the only breakable card in here, aside from maybe Vabjorn, but Geralt Quen works perfectly with the Bear School Witchers as well. So the Bear Witchers, if you play them with uh, Geralt, the shield will actually block the self damage, so you gain 11 points on the Bear Witcher and then 2 on Geralt itself, and that gives you a 13 point play in one go. So even without Arnagat, Geralt can still get a lot of value out of this deck. So I hope that's clear. Let's uh, dive into an example match to show you how you should be using these cards. And we face Shield Walls in Northern Realms. That is. You're a fan of my work. Very interesting. So, because of the shields, that might actually be interesting, because Arnagat will not be working all that well if your opponent has shields. But, let's see how this plays out. Let's get rid of the veteran over here. Um, I think that's... Yeah, all of our witches are in our hand right now, so we definitely need to get rid of one. 
And that is pretty okay. Seems like a good start thing points to get going. We have a few passive cards that we can play first, even though our opponent actually starts, so we should be good to go. Remember, Shield Wall actually needs to be applied after the opponent has played their unit. So the shields from Shield Wall will not block Arnagat's ability, which could be very nice as an end play. So Arnagat should be kept for last, obviously, because he's just the most powerful card in the uh, deck, um, along with the uh, Wild Boar of the Sea. But let's start with the Longship. That can give us a bit of value while we're going along. It might be destroyed with the Boiling Oil or also Thunder. Okay, fair enough. I'm just gonna bleed that around a bit. <laughs> Don't really care about those cards getting destroyed. Let's put the Berserker on the field. Again, same thing that kind of does it automatically, generating some value for us. And then we get the Temerian Drummer. The Temerian Drummer is gonna get Gunning Slashed, because we don't want to have those engines on the field. There we go. And then the Berserker will do its last damage tick, and we'll get those 6 points. So 10, 6, not that bad as a start, especially since our opponent had the tactical advantage. So for the Bear School, which is you really need to count your cards in your hand. So right now we have Prince Ancy. That's a weird start. Because... Ancius is gonna get... Huh. Huh. That is... That is so weird to do that now. Um... I could technically take it out if I want to by using Patricelle of Fury right now and then just destroying it with Champion's Charge, but we started on Red Coin, so we don't really feel too pressed, hard pressed to take advantage of this. So let's just... I could use another Gutting Slash... The Bear Witchers are useless right now. So... Oh, let's just use Gurd. Let's give him a juicy target to actually hit with that. Because this gives us two Bloodthirsts. So one more Bloodthirst and that's enough. So that's Ansias is going to hit Gurd. And yeah, that's just going to be it. Gurd is going to be dead. But that's not too bad. I want to bait this out on something big. I don't really care about this first round right now. I mean, if that was, was what you wanted to do, then you could have done that. That is really weird. So they gained another shield there. Um, I still have six cards in my hand. So... I don't have double blood thirst, so I'm only doing four damage with Gutting Slash. But... With the Bear Witcher, I'm actually going to do 8 points. With Gunning Slash, I'm doing 4, so that's going to put us to 18. But the Vitality is going to go over that, so I probably should pass. Even though, yeah, they, they wasted Ansias, it's not that bad. We only wasted a few, uh, a couple of bronzes. There we go, so that's another pass, and we lost round 1. And they lost one of their Duelists, which is also very peculiar, because usually you want to keep those. Um, so for this round, I'm gonna actually toss the Veteran and then I'm gonna get rid of Arnagod. Because Arnagod I'm gonna pull with Gerald in a minute. So that's not too bad. Uh, we actually get Black Rayla with a shield. Um, that would be a good one to just take out in one go. But let's start slow, because of course our opponents can still pass. And if we want to do a big hit, we can do that. But we don't want to do it prematurely here. And then we get hit. Rayla is boosted, so that makes sense. I could have also used the Marauder. And we get Marching Orders and the Redanian Knights. Not that bad, actually. Um... I'm gonna use the Uncrate Greatsword first. Because the Longship is gonna get one more hit in normally, unless it gets destroyed now, but Rayla only does two damage. And then we're gonna use the Marauder to take out the shield. Oh, it actually goes, they actually go for. Ooh, Folly Boy. Okay, that was a nice play. So that's not too bad from them. I can always use, always use my leader ability to finish this off. 
So let's do the Marauder. If I hit the Redanian Knight, yeah, it's gonna do two damage, but at least that engine has stopped. We got one Bloodthirst and the shield is gone from Rayla. So we could technically now use... Oh, we can't actually use another Bear School Witcher. So we're going to have to use Gutting Slash first. So getting reinforcements, another Redanian Knight. Not too bad, I would say. And then that two damage is going to be wasted on the one power Marauder. That's actually really weird that they're going for this right now. Um, so let's do... I'm actually going to use Patricidal Fury now. So I can do this, put that on the back row, and then I could destroy Rayla, but I'm not going to. I'm gonna just hit her for six. There we go, and that should be enough for now. Next up, we're gonna use Han Kaduch. Kaduch, Kaduch, Han Kaduch, Han Kaduch. It's such a weird name, but Han Kaduch to uh, spawn the Bear School Witcher, and that's going to easily take us over that point total. And yes, we used our leader ability, but again, our opponent used theirs for uh, two charges already. And then we get Philippa Blind Fury, so that's 10 damage. That's just not enough to kill... Oh, yeah, it is enough. And then we get another shield on Rayla. That's also not enough. I'm gonna, yeah, as I said, I'm gonna play in Harem Kaduch now. The Bear Witcher is still the better play here, even though the Mentor would go to 9, but it is a bigger target then. So let's just play the Bear Witcher um, and take out the Redanian Knight over there. And if I can avoid it, of course, I'm going to try to not... Okay, so they're going to try and boost Rayla up. Yeah, um, I should probably destroy Rayla now. Even though that shield is annoying, uh, but it was the last shield. Yeah, so let's play Vavjorn. I could actually... No, Stunning Blow is not going to kill it because it has a shield. So we're going to go with Champion's Charge and destroy it like this. So that's that. So with the Bear Witches, we still have... That's eight. Yeah, we can still easily do this. Ooh, that is annoying, but... Not that annoying. Because I can destroy it with a Bear School Witcher, so that's not a problem at all. Uh, so let's do that right now. There we go. And then we get another six points from the heal. And now I'm hoping that they pass, because otherwise... Yeah, okay. So we get eight points. Oh, that's going to be a tie. Um, because they get two more points, so six, I get eight. Ooh, damn. Okay, I got kind of fucked there, so I'm, I'm forced to play Arnagod now. Because Arnagod is going to be nine. Yeah, okay. Not that big of a deal, Arnagod is nine. But I'm forced to, because otherwise we're not going to be able to, yeah. We need to count all cards, and that's not all cards, so... 24-23. We do get card advantage now in the last round. Because our opponent tried to push and they... Oh wait, they didn't. No, they didn't. They still have one card. Okay. Okay. We lost our best play. Should have played it earlier. But again, we still got some pretty powerful cards here. I'm guessing we're not going to get the, the Bloodthirst with Donar. That's seven points. I'm gonna get rid of Donar and see... Yeah, let's get rid of Donar. Ooh, and we get Armory. Yeah, that's not ideal. I would have loved the Dire Bear, because the Dire Bear against Northern Realms is really powerful. Because they can't boost anything. Um, well, first play is rather obvious. Let's put the Invader on the field. Seven power. We have three damage and then uh, whatever the hell I want to... Destroy. Play. So, this is still possible, but it kind of depends on what our opponent has. I'm guessing they're gonna have Seltkirk as another duelist. A siege tower. That is also seven points. 
But I'll damage it with the Bear Witcher. What are you gonna do? Huh? That's eight points for us. But it's ten points ahead, and now we get Renew, and Renew is gonna be. Is that gonna be Rayla then? Rayla would be weird. Oh no, the drummer, okay. I'm gonna wait until there's something bigger. The drummer doesn't seem like too much of a priority here. Um, I'm gonna put Armory on the Bear Witcher, so in case we get Bloody Baron, it's just gonna be, what, three points? Three points on the reset. A reinforced trebuchet is five. Hmm. Wow, this is gonna be close. So the drummer gets only four points anymore. The trebuchet is not gonna do anything. But I feel like I should probably take out the trebuchet. So then our opponent needs to actually play ten points. It's definitely possible, but... It's gonna have to be 10 points. Philippa is gone. Oh yes. There we go. That wasn't the most ideal way of using this deck, but there we go. We won against Shield Wall. You know what? I'm gonna play one more um, just to show off that final round and hopefully be able to. Um, so you can actually see Arnegald in action because it felt like this wasn't a good showcase. It was a good showcase to use, how to use those strong 8 power bear school witchers. But other than that, the big cards you haven't seen, you haven't seen Dire Bear, you haven't seen Arnegald in play. So let's try this one more time. Okay, and we face Skelligan next. It seems to be a Lippy deck. So right now the meta is really boring. So how do you get Lockdown, Lippy, or uh, as we just had before, I didn't show you that match, but it was a Vi match. So we're just gonna skip all that and just get into this. But Lippy is definitely beatable with this deck. So we need to be careful that we have a few passive cards here, because of course the passives are gonna be able to stand on their own without needing to have a target. So I'm gonna get rid of the Bear Witcher. Oh, the Marauder isn't really that useful either, so let's get rid of that. Gutting Slash is fine-ish. Uh, do I need Gutting Slash? Don't really need Gutting Slash right now, I think. I could get another Mulligan out and we get Arnegat. Okay, fair enough. So let's play the Uncrate Longship first. So that's one of our basic starting plays when you're on blue coin, just play the Longship. Um, against the Lippy deck, it's important that you have your row clear. So that means uh, Gert especially, and then of course the Wild Boar of the Sea is a perfect ender against um, Skellige here. Um, so they don't destroy the Longship in one go. So let's play Herkia then. I'm going to boost Herkia up to 8, even though we don't get the Veil, but against Skellige, Veil doesn't really do anything. Veil is mostly for uh, Nilfgaard, so let's pass with that. And we get another hit on that Bear School. Uh, that's the Adept, right? Yeah, the Bear Witcher Adept. So he's not going to really get anywhere. And then we get the Protector. Um, it's not a bad start, actually. Uh, I'm going to play the Uncrate Greatsword as well. We can get damaged that way, but then we get a hit on the Protector, which is really good. We want to hit that Protector and not the uh, the Adept. We get another Adept. Okay, I suppose. So it even gets hit twice because the Adept hits himself. Um, but now we have double blood thirst, so we can actually use Donar to just take out the Protector. And there goes their entire reason of existing. Their nice flow is gone, but Earthsound Ritual, just the leader ability already indicates that this is going to be a Lippy deck, especially with cards like Snowdrop, uh, meaning that they want to draw certain cards into their hand. And then combined with the Roach, uh, definitely means that we're going to get a Lippy. So we're going to try and play this slow. We have the benefit here. We have a few passive abilities. This is working out as expected. We want to win this first round, so we have final say in the last round against Lippy. So now we're getting getting slashed. Fine, I don't really care. Um, dire Bear is not useful. I should have used Gert first, now that I think about it. Because um, Gert now is... Kind of useless. 
Um, the defender won't help us either. I think I'm going to use Gerd anyway as a sort of final play. So let's put him over there. Uh, no, let's put him on the melee row just because it's not going to do anything to the entire row. And then we could just hit the, the back row. And then I'm going to hope for a pass. Probably not going to get a pass. And then we get Onegomancy. That's probably going to be, yeah. Ceres on crates. That's going to give them... That is... A 12 point play, right? So that's 12, 11... So that's just not over us, but the healing is going to put us behind. Um, so that means that I'm going to use a Wild Boy of the Sea now anyway. Uh, it's a bit soon because I already used Gerd as well. But it's going to have to work here. So let's put that down. And that gives us a nice clean sweep with a lot of Bloodthirst. So now they're what? Uh, I think 19 points behind. But they're getting 2 points from the Adept still. That is actually pretty annoying. But we do get a pass, so that's good. I wanted to have Lost Say here. Um, because Arnagat will definitely benefit from that. The Dire Bear is not going to be that useful in this matchup because we just not get something useful out of this. And now we get Geralt, which means that Arnagat needs to go, but I'll keep Arnagat in hand right now, just so I can mulligan him next time. Uh, Gutting Slash isn't going to be all that useful. Uh, it's not, is it? We could do some damage with it, but other than that, the the invader will be better. And then we get Stunning Blow anyway, so let's just pass on this one. So against the Lippy deck, you don't want to actually have a long round, because of course with the Ceres play, they actually have a lot of momentum that they can go with. I'm gonna get rid of Arnagat now, because I can pull him with Geralt. Um, and then, so the invader is now 7 points, which is actually perfectly fine. So, either Stunning Blow or Gutting Slash. Gutting Slash is actually um, a guaranteed 6 points right now, because we still have our leader ability. So let's do it like that. That is perfectly fine. So we get the two Bear School Witchers, which is good. Um, we get a Brook Far Hunter. That is actually is a bit of an annoying play. Um, I'm gonna Gutting Slash that immediately. Because I don't want to have those damage pings on me, and it keeps my board clean, so they don't have anything to work against. And then we get Burna, of course, drawing two cards and discarding two cards. They did get rid of one Skirmisher, but they could still get rid of uh, Morgfark and another Skirmisher. So that would be nine points if they are that lucky. They don't. Only a Skirmisher. Um, I'm going to play this slow. So I don't want to put too many points on the field to, for them to interact with. So let's just put the Invader on the field now. And put that over here. I think I'm going to put the Dire Bear on the front row. Because that's where Ceres needs to go anyway. Uh, which would also make it... Ooh. Or maybe just there. That is... So they don't really have a card that benefits from those self-damage sticks. Interesting. Um, that means I'm going to put... The Dire Bear in the back row. So if they want to damage anything on that row, it's their last protector. They don't have any other ones. Um, they could still Karate the, um, the Dire Bear, which make that which would make that Karate 8 points. But other than that, I think I kind of blocked that play a little bit. Because that protector could go rather high depending on their cards that they still have left. So there we get Herrn Kaduch. Um, so the extra point that they're going to get there isn't going to help. But the Dire Bear, again, doesn't block healing. And since the that heals, it's not going to help us too much there. Um, so that's going to be 7 points. Let's put the Defender down. So now is the point that you're going to have to start counting your cards. So Geralt will going to have to play not the next card, but the card after that. So you play that when you have four cards in your hand. And then we get a Bear Witcher Quartermaster. Again, also not going to be dealing points to 
the uh, protector, which is good. Uh, they're gonna get extra cards and I don't have a rogue clear anymore. Sarah's is also still incoming, so we need to be careful with that. But right now, I think Hern Kaduch should be fine. Although the Adapt will be healed off by Hern Kaduch. So I think I'm just gonna take out the... Um, so I'm gonna use a Bear Witcher and I'm gonna take out the Protector uh, anyway, even though... Because yeah, they can't heal that anymore, so that's another damage unit on the op opposing side, so... There we go. Seven points ahead, but basically the same plays left. And we get another self damage. And of course, as you can see, the protector does the animation, but it's not healing it off. <laughs> and they started checking the protector there for a second because they didn't really notice what was going on. And there we get Lippy. So Lippy is going to be a 10 point play in one go now because Roach is going to come out and... Um, oh, I'm Mork Park as well. So that means, yeah, that is 15 points in one go. Okay, so now they're 10 points ahead, but we still have this in hand. We have him protected, so let's play Geralt at the front. Play Arnegal with that. Oh, and I played it too soon. Yeah, I played it too soon. I could have gotten more armor on Arnegat by using my leader ability there. Um, so now it's only four, but still. This basically blocks any card that my opponent will play now. So especially if you're, if they still have, um, what's the big card? The big card that you need to damage three times, yeah, whatever. That one, um, you actually don't get the deploy, uh, the damage ability anymore. So if they need to have damage at three times, that card is just going to be gone. So like Ceres, Ceres is now going to die in one go. And that makes it still a bit a pretty good play, but... Um, this is still doable. We still have our leader ability. Right now their rows are actually pretty filled. I'm actually wondering what they're going to be playing now. Because if I play... It's going to be... It's going to be Corelti probably that they still have left. Um, so I'm gonna play the other Bear School Witcher over here, because I don't think I'll have much use for the healing now. Uh, so let's just get Lippy damaged. Uh, there we go. If I don't actually need to play um, those damaged Deathling Sirens, all the better, because I don't have the benefit for them anymore. I still have six points on Herd Kaduch, and I can take out two big cards. But it depends on what my opponent still has. It's probably going to be Coralti. Coralti is going to be 7 points regardless. So that's going to put us to... 34. 34, which means... Okay, we still have a pair with your Quartermaster. That still has... Oh, it, it just gets destroyed, right? I forgot about that. Um, and we still have armor on Arnagot, so that's not a problem at all. Now I'm going to fill that front row with hmm, Arnjolf. I probably don't want to play Arnjolf. Uh, I'm just going to Champions Charge the Bear Witcher Adept. And then put Arnjolf on the back row. Um, so that gives... Fills that back row. Um, and now we're going to use this. And I think we got it, right? Because we're six points ahead. They don't get six points from that. There we go. That's not six points. And whatever they're going to play, we can counter it. It's Korati. So we're still one point ahead. Because we also have Korati. And we can actually get rid of a six-point unit. There we go. And that's how you beat Lippy. And that actually showed off all the cards that we wanted to show off. So this is actually a better showcase than the first match that we went with. So uh, there we go. That is the power of the Viking Revenge deck. It even kills Lippy. I should actually make that the tagline for this deck. It actually kills Lippy as well. So uh, that's the deck in its fullest. So you saw most of the most powerful cards. I think almost all of them 
uh, in that last match against that Lippy deck. So while Boy of the Sea, very good against Lippy decks to clear out that entire board and giving you the advantage. Karate Heatwave, quick counter against anything that your opponent can throw at you. And then Arnagat with Geralt Quen is just incredibly powerful. Geralt Quen giving the Arnagat that shield just obliterates your opponent's because at that point your opponent only has three cards left as you saw. So even without something like Sucrus or even the extra armor from Armory, uh, Arnagat can still take out those last few cards. Um, especially against Squiretail, we haven't seen that now, but Squiretail movement just dies at the end. Because, like for example, uh, if, you, if they play Gazros, dead. If they play a Cat School Witcher, it's dead. They can't do anything anymore. Their engines are just going to die once they hit the field. So, but very important that you protect that with that Defender. And that is the Viking Revenge deck. So hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any more tips to improve this deck, let me know in the comment section down below so we can help each other out because that's what we're here for after all. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to leave a like down here as well and uh, let me know what you think because I really, really enjoy the feedback that I'm getting from you guys as well. So thank you guys enormously for watching and hope to see you in the next episode of Gwent Edge. Goodbye, stay nutty.